Hi everyone, it's Wendy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, I am doing a uh, video on the 12 things I can't do without in order to do my uh, journaling, my um, journal making, uh, and, and journaling as well. So I thought I would share those with you. This was a, a viewer request a while ago, and um, these are things that I think are different than what they might have been when I first got started. Um, uh, my style has evolved a little, and certainly um, I've been influenced by other great makers and whatnot as well. So um, yeah, I just uh, I think that my my <laughs> I hope that my needs or my essentials are a little more basic than they were originally. I went out and bought a whole bunch of stuff that I thought I needed and turns out I didn't really need it for the sort of things that I do. I mean, they're love, they're nice to have, but I didn't necessarily need it. So, number one of the 12 things that I have to have, my 12 essentials, is inspiration. So, I get inspiration from a few places. Um, I get it from um, YouTube, for sure. Uh, from other makers on YouTube. Um, I get it from books and I get it from friends, inspiration, I get it from purchases. I get it from nature and that's what this is here for. This is a beautiful little print that um, my father-in-law gave me many years ago. And I am so inspired by nature and most of what I do is nature related. I do do some other things that just I find for some reason touch me or I find beautiful. Uh, I love history, I love trees. So yeah, so this is just to remind me that nature is one of my biggest influences. Um, and Other Makers, this is a beautiful book that I received from my dear friend Rachel at Roxy Creations and I just treasure it. I have a few. Rachel and I have done swaps over the years. Isn't that stunning? Uh, and I've done a flip through of this journal, a share with it. But I am so uh, inspired by Rachel. Um, she has certainly been someone who has inspired my style a great deal um, in the last uh, couple of years. So thank you Rachel for that. Um, and sometimes I'm just inspired by some of my journaling in the past. So this is from December of uh, 2018. My goodness, gosh, is that five years now? This is my darling Stella. Um, and uh, as you all know, or those who have followed me know that she had passed last year, um, about four or five months before Leo passed. And uh, yeah, it was a real, real tough year. But see how I used to do a lot of inking back then? I don't do it as much now, and then a little squirrel, and I adore squirrels. So sometimes I'm inspired by some of my own paintings or some of my own journaling. So inspiration is really important. Um, I would say YouTube is super for that. There's so many marvelous makers um, on YouTube, and um, just go on YouTube, and you don't have to create a, st a channel. Just go on and just uh, search for junk journals and you'll see all kinds of cool things and just play with the, the first thing that speaks to you in some way say okay now I'm going to try and make something like that so that is number one gosh where am I going to put all of this stuff <laughs> okay where's number two here's number two so number two pretty simple is paper I need to have paper uh, and I used a lot of stained coffee paper uh, I used to put a lot more in each of my journals. Uh, I stain it myself and I coffee stain. And my process for coffee staining, I still do it the same way. I always link it in every one of my videos at the base of the description. Just go down there if you're interested. It's really simple and it doesn't require using the oven. Uh, they just air dry. So, um, so yeah, stained coffee paper. I like book pages. You can use junk mail, you can use vintage paper, you can use... Um, I'd be cautious about magazine papers if you are going to sell your journals because they can be under copyright. So here's some very old, isn't that stunning? Very, very old papers. Uh, and I think I might have gotten that from Rachel. Pretty confident. And I've got some from my darling friend Pam. Hey Pam. 
uh, and there's some envelopes and whatnot. So I've gotten more into using uh, a couple of pages, if I can, if I have them available to me, of these antiquarian or vintage pages. These are from the 1800s, really beautiful. So those are the sort of things I, those are must haves for me when it comes to paper. Um, and then the third thing that are, is a must for me, uh, and sometimes I'll do a journal that doesn't have digitals, but digitals, I love digitals. And I love, there's so many people on Etsy who are selling, and so many on YouTube who have amazing um, journal kits and elements that you can use in journals. So tied to journals is you have to have computer or access to a computer. Um, I'm not sure if you can, uh, maybe you can, I, I know I can print from my phone, but not everybody has that capacity. So access to a computer, and sometimes that could just be the access to the computer at your local library or whatever. Um, but when you buy a digital, you can download it uh, to a thumbnail um, and um, a thumb drive, I should say. This is a thumbnail. <laughs> thumb drive. <laughs> uh, and you could, you know, just download it onto the thumb drive if you're borrowing someone's computer or using a computer elsewhere. And then you can take that thumb drive to someplace like Staples or one of the, a copy place, and you can print your digitals that way. So if, if you don't have a printer, you have that option. Um, so I love digitals. Uh, I have l lots of Tracy's. I might think I have everything Tracy's ever done. Uh, and these are in my recent uh, nature journals. Um, and of course, you know, for me, I love labels. I'm just trying to pull this out. These are some I'm working with, Tracy labels. Uh, but I love Rachel. Roxy Creations has wonderful digitals. Mrs. Coggs has wonderful digitals. Um, chapter One. Uh, oh my God, Artsology. Uh, gosh, I hope I didn't cuss there. Um, <laughs> apologies if I did. There's so many wonderful people. Artie Mays. Uh, my mind's gone blank. I should have written this all down. Um, I'm missing someone obvious, I am sure. I wish I had my phone right handy. Um, Steph Loves Junk. Um, anyway, there's all kinds. And I list the people I use the most in all of my videos, so they will be listed down below. And I apologize if I have missed somebody obvious. Uh, dreams, etc. Um, yeah, lots of family. Oh, oh, Lorna at um, TaylorMade Journals, fabulous digitals as well. Okay, so those are digitals. I think they are for me. They're essential for sure. And if you've seen my videos or watched my um, uh, seen my some of my journals on Etsy, you would know that that's the case. Number four is a printer or an access to a printer. So for me, it's the Epson Echo Tank or Eco Tank. I have the ET3710. I think it's mid range or low mid range. Um, there is a, a there's another printer that's a little bit less expensive in the Eco Tank range, which is terrific. Um, I have to say, I use EcoTank because I print so often. I, it will be unusual. I'm, I print probably at least every other day. So it's important for me to have a good, reliable printer and have one that I don't have to splurge out on ink frequently. I can tell you that ink is the most expensive part. Now, an EcoTank is going to probably cost you, in Canada, it's going to cost you $400 plus in that range, I think. Uh, in the U.S., it's, you know, with the currency change, is going to be different, and certainly in the U.K. You can start, and the first printer I ever had was an HP, uh, and it was terrific. It was like, I don't know, maybe $40 or $50, but the ink was so expensive, and the ink was, um, went through it really quickly. Now, HP does have an ink program. That is worth using, and I did do that for the first couple of years, but even then I was printing beyond the capacity for the program. So you paid like uh, anywhere between uh, $5.99 and, and $14, $15 a month, and they would automatically send you cartridges as your machine started to run out. But it started to get pricier, and I do find on a monthly basis the EcoTank, for the amount I'm doing, is the right one. Okay, I hope that's helpful in some way. Um, number five 
is cutting tools. I have to have cutting tools. So um, start out with scissors. You don't need anything fancy. I have a guillotine. I have the small guillotine. Uh, and I also have a Fisker's trimmer. Mine is kind of middle of the range. You can get, you can spend, you know, $200 on a nice Fisker paper trimmer that, you know, where you can change the blades. I think I paid for mine. I got it at Michael's and I thought it was 40% off back, pardon me, back then. I think I might've paid 70 or $80 for it. But good cutting tools that are sharp. Um, my scissors, I use these are also Fiskars and they have this extra little uh, spring in them and they're good for people who have hand mobility issues or joint issues. I have osteoarthritis in my hands and my wrists. Um, so that is something that's essential for me. So that was number five. Number six is fabric. I cannot do without fabric. So for me, <clears throat> I use canvas a lot and I use um, seven ounce to nine ounce canvas and I buy mine on Amazon and I use upholstery fabric and or t and ticking as well when I can get it. Ticking is so hard to get your hands on guys. What's the deal with ticking? Anyway, this is um, actually a, a printed canvas. It's a lighter gray, but isn't it gorgeous? I'm going to use it for some spring journals, but I love this fabric. Super, super beautiful. And then this is uh, a, a very old uh, antiquarian linen. Uh, isn't it stunning? Like it's just got this ooh, yumminess. Uh, and this I got from um, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel, from Roxy Creation. So I've had this for some time. Uh, so uh, I think I have some more coming. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So, um, yeah, I think for me, fabric, because I love making fabric cover journals uh, as well as making hardcover journals, but fabric cover um, are just so squishy and uh, they're just lovely to have. So that's number six. Okay, whoops, we're halfway, we're halfway. I turned my board over, smaller little blocks, but it's cleaner than what it was. Um, number seven that I is a must for me. Now I don't use it in every journal, but I would say at least half of my journals I do is that I use vintage doilies and lace and or trims. So this has, remember I mentioned ticking in the last, uh, <laughs> when it came to fabric, this is kind of my last piece of ticking. It was from an edge. It's that lovely striped fabric. Anyway, and then I have like vintage doilies and the end bits, aren't they gorgeous? It's an old tablecloth. Um, there are some trims here as well, some lace trims. Uh, here's some from a, an old um, edge of a, I think it was an edge of a, like a little um, tablecloth, yeah. So, beautiful stuff. So I use those as well. So those are my doilies and my trims. Uh, apologies if that's super noisy, but that's number seven. And sometimes, like I say, I don't always use it, but these are things that on a go forward basis, I are must haves for me. My number eight is a book binding kit. And I bought, purchased mine on Amazon. I think uh, most of us do. I think, I'm pretty sure Rachel does, and I'm pretty sure Gail. Gail, you do as well. So this is a kit that includes these bits. Apologies. This is my binding box. So I always have a number of things in it. So the threads I cut off when I'm binding, I just put them right back <laughs> in the box, and then I clean it, you know, every, I don't know, a couple of months. So it comes with, depending on the size you buy, it comes with this waxed, um, thread, which is perfect. Let me see, does this have, this might be the skew that you want. Um, so it comes with that. It comes with a, a pokey tool, which is right here, uh, which is, works really well. I tend to use my, uh, it comes with needles. Uh, I, I use my Tim Holtz pokey tool, but it comes with one that is equally good and then I have my in my kit I keep my um, in that box my paper clips and whatnot and so as I make templates 
uh, for various journals that I make. I keep them all here. That way I don't have to make, keep making them over and over. So, so these are all different sizes um, that I might use for, you know, different height journals. And there's all kinds of them in here. 7.5 inch. Yeah. So that's it. My book binding kit, and apologies again for the noise, absolutely an essential. Absolutely an essential. So that's number eight. And these aren't necessarily in order of when um, their importance, but they are in, they are part of the 12. Glue. <laughs> Can't live without glue. So for me, my go-to, I think I use art glitter glue more than any other glue. So I have my art glitter glue. I order it in the warmer months of the year. I don't order it past September because um, if it ships and it, it is, you know, gets real cold, it can change the viscosity of it. It doesn't change the viscosity of it if it's already adhered to something. So if you, you know, made something and suddenly get cold uh, and like you made a, a, a journal card and suddenly it got real cold or something froze in your home, it's not going to change the viscosity on the item because it's already been used, but it does change it uh, in the bottle. It can actually get hardened. I had one once where I took the cover off and I squeezed it and it all came out like a hot dog like out of one of these. It was hysterical and upsetting at the same time because it is not cheap. Uh, but I use it a lot and it does not too eight ounce bottles or maybe three eight ounce bottles pretty much do me for uh, most of the year. So surprising, I know. I also use um, glue stick and my preference is Uhu when I can get it here. I do have a couple of sticks of Giotto glue that I got from Rachel and I love them and I hoard them because they're so special. Um, and they're so expensive here. I cannot get them here. Uh, if I were to order them, I think it's something like $80 for three um, on Amazon. It's ridiculous. So anyway, we've got that. And then the other thing I use for my PVC glue, I use Aileen's Tacky Glue. Um, it is, for me, it's the best. It works terrific. It adheres things uh, quickly in terms of, you know, setting them out, but you still have give time. So I'm a big, big fan of Aileen's Tacky Glue. So that's number nine. We're sailing with our glue, and where is number 10? <laughs> oh, here it is, number 10. I really can't live without my eyelet setter, my crocodile. So eyelets and a setter, uh, you do not need to have a crocodile, but for me, because I use eyelets a lot, um, I have to have my crocodile, and I love it. You cannot go wrong. I know on Amazon you can purchase it in a in a set which includes the eyelets or or grommets, um, and uh, I just have this one that I got. I think I got it at Michaels a long, long time ago, uh, and it does the trick for me. What can I say? I'm a big fan. You can't go wrong with that. That's number ten, and number eleven is cardstock. My number 11th is cardstock. My go-to for cardstock is Recollections uh, craft paper. I may single-handedly keep Michaels in business over this purchase. I, I purchase these frequently. There's 50, 65 pound. It's a little heavier than their other cardstock of the same, that, that's displayed at the same location. Um, their cardstock paper, but I love it. It's acid and lingon free. Uh, I use it to back a lot of my uh, tags. I also use it to reinforce spines, um, make tuck spots, lots of ephemera. You could use it as the inside of a cover. There's lots of things you could do. You might want to double it up for that. Um, so I use this. I use Tim Holtz far less frequently. That's something I used to purchase all the time. Now I know there his big scrapbook pages like uh, memorabilia and wallflower and all of those sets are not as easy to find. I see them on Amazon from time to time. I still have a few books of those, but I don't use them nearly as much. I'm more likely to use them now to assist in ephemera making 
or, or to put on the inside of a, like for a tuck spot on the inside of a fabric cover, that sort of thing. Back in the day, I used it, gosh, probably just as much as I use paper. I used to use it for my signature anchor pages, all of that stuff. So there's those, and I know there's other, um, Stamperia makes beautiful paper, um, Jen Bishop, Dream Etc. makes beautiful um, cardstock as well. So there's lots of other suppliers, uh, but this is just by way of example, this cardstock, and I have to have this. This is something I, <laughs> I use, I would say daily. So, recollections. And then the final thing, and this has been fairly new to me in the last two to three years, is um, I can't do without antiquarian books. I just can't do without them. And I think Rachel at Roxy Creations has been the biggest influence on me for that. Uh, and I purchase mine. Sometimes I'll get, um, I'll purchase a book or two from Rachel or I'll get, she'll gift me a book or two. And um, other times, um, I'll go on eBay and look for them. And I look for wherever I can get uh, really good prices. So these, this one is, gosh, I'm, these are all 1800s. I try and get 1800s or uh, no later than 1910, if I can. Uh, I don't know why, I just find the paper is a, a much better quality. And this is all French. I like it when it's a foreign language. Uh, so yeah, these are really beautiful. And I use different sellers on eBay and I can't say that there's any one that I go to more than any other. But isn't that a stunner? I just love marble paper on the cover. And there's a little tiny one. Um, annual history. Hist so this would be like a, uh, from 1852, what went on in the year. And look at the paper. Isn't that stunning? And this is this is definitely rag paper. You can tell by feeling it. So look at this. It's little charts at the beginning. It would be like um, an almanac. Uh, love this little book. So this is going to be fun to make into a journal. Look at these pages. So um, yeah, all these pages may be stuck. So we'll see. We'll see how we get it out. But um, it's terrific if you're taking it out, if you can see air, this little tip, see if you can see air there, this is going to easily come out the pages. So that's it. Those are the 12 things I cannot, uh, these are my essentials. These are the things I have to have with my journal making these days. I hope that's helpful. I, I actually would love to see other makers do a video like this. I'd be curious to see what are their 12 essentials. And I am going to keep you to it. What are the 12 things you can't live without? Um, and I think, like I said, not all of these 12 show up in everything I do, but most of them. I would say probably nine for sure. Um, but um, really fabulous stuff. So I hope you guys are all well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was some help. I hope it was helpful for beginners. Uh, because sometimes we do go out and we think, oh, we need this or we need that. These are not uh, out of reach things. And the antiquarian books is kind of a, a, a an extra. Uh, it's me being extra because you don't need to have anything this fancy. You can get things at your Goodwill, uh, you know, thrift shops for less than, you know, the equivalent of three or four dollars. Now, I didn't spend huge amounts for these. But, um, but they're still far more expensive than it would be to buy a thrift book. Um, and yeah, it's a wonderful spot to go to thrift stores and get books that have really fun covers that you might want to use. You can cover the cover with fabric. There's lots of options. You can build your own right from the get-go. You don't need to have a cover. Uh, there's lots of digitals that have beautiful marble images and that sort of thing as well. But because I'm kind of a history buff and I've been moving towards, you know, storytelling, or I like to do some storytelling in my journals, I like to get these older ones as well. Also, as part of books, um, botanical books are terrific. For me, I, because I really specialize, I think, uh, in botanicals and in anything to do with nature. So books on birds, books on plants, books on... Uh, gardens, that sort of thing. And they don't have to be vintage or old, but it's fun when they are. 
Um, I can recommend Tracy Fox if you go through her site and you just search on, um, you know, nature books or that sort of thing. She's done some wonderful videos in the past talking about books that she's used and they're absolutely phenomenal. So if you can ever see one in a thrift shop or even if you're lucky enough to get one on eBay that's not going to charge you an arm and a leg, I say go for it. Okay, thanks again. Sorry for babbling on and I really look forward to seeing you next time. Take care everybody. Bye.